Hey there, hope you're well. Welcome to our weekly update of our favourite DeFi protocol out there, Elephant Money. And a lot to go through this week. We're primarily going to focus on futures. There's been some big changes to futures, so I want to kind of really explore what they are and why there's nothing to be concerned about. I know what you're like, or maybe not you, but some of us, when there's a change, we kind of automatically get a little bit fearful, don't we? So... We conquer fear through knowledge. I've always enjoyed that expression, and it's true. So let's have a huge kind of avalanche of knowledge so we understand what is going on. So we're going to look at the changes in futures. We're also going to look at why futures, and this happened on Christmas Eve, why futures pivoted away from us depositing BUSD, and we now deposit BNB. So we're primarily going to look at futures a lot in this update, but I also want to end this update by looking at what happened at least a few days ago at the time of making you this video, and we had a big sell of elephant token and why this is a great thing. So let's jump in. So let me quickly start by kind of framing uh, what I want to want to cover and go through in this in this update by saying that we are, of course, in, in a nascent industry, aren't we? I mean, the whole blockchain world has only been around since 2008. And decentralized finance, which, of course, is, if you like, a subsection of the whole crypto market, that's really only been around since 2020. The summer of 2020 was known as the summer of DeFi. So we're, what, three three and a half years into this and so the reason I wanted to say that is because any industry and I know that you know this but it's sometimes worth kind of just acknowledging and flagging up any industry pivots and evolves as it should and grows you know think about if you're in business for yourself I'm sure your business now looks different to how it was when you started and so it is the same with blockchain particularly with decentralized finance so all that said let's explore what has been going on particularly with futures let's start with the change of what we deposit into futures now as I'm sure you know until Christmas Eve uh, we deposited in BUSD and we earned in BUSD and it will work perfectly and it's always great so why change why the change in the first place if everything worked perfectly well let me explain it's all due to our arch enemy gary gensler grr, the head of the sec the security and exchanges commission well i say it's all to do with him that's a little bit unfair but it's certainly to do with the with the sec so let me explain what i mean the sec the security and exchanges commission is a u.s government department responsible for protecting investors so that's a great thing and you know it's it's a much needed regulatory service and that's great but the sec they kind of look after stocks and shares and investments in america and uh, again you know much needed nobody is disputing that however however the sec have made it no secret that they also want to get their hands on cryptocurrency what now of course as we all know the whole purpose of cryptocurrency is it is a viable alternative to traditional finance, to centralized finance. We are decentralized. So if there's a centralized authority controlling it, well, that completely defeats the whole purpose of why this industry exists in the first place. Obviously, we don't want to have a centralized organization controlling what is fundamentally a decentralized business and, and entity. And also, let's be, you know, brutally transparent here. You can't control blockchain. It is borderless. It's permissionless. It's geographyless. He says making up words, but, but you know what I mean. But all that said, it's no secret that traditional finance don't like crypto. Why? Well, it's because for the first time ever, they've got competition, haven't they? Banks are very happy with how things have always been, where they reap the rewards and the rich and the elite and the egalitarian do well. And us, you know, the commoners, they'll serve us the crumbs. And they're very happy with that. They're very happy that we can make 0.3% a year with our bank account, whereas in decentralized finance, we can make 0.3% a day, 0.4% a day. So it's no secret that traditional finance don't like decentralized finance. And of course, there's a revolving door, particularly in America, between Wall Street and Washington. There's lots of lobbyists that are continually trying to crack down on the crypto industry. But it's just not 
possible. And as I'm sure you may know, the SEC have recently lost a lot of court cases where they have tried to essentially control cryptocurrency. Now, all that said, all that said, there's a reason that I'm sharing this with you. One thing that the SEC have kind of got in their crosshairs, if you like, are stable coins. They kind of realize that they can't control the whole of the crypto industry, but they're kind of coming after a little subsection of the crypto industry, stable coins. So they're really trying to clamp down on stable coins. Now, because of that, a lot of decentralized protocols, including Elephant Money, that rely really on stable coins for their lifeblood, quite rightly, have been thinking for a while, and I know Elephant Money have been thinking about this for a year or so, to avoid unnecessary scrutiny from the SEC. They've been thinking, do you know what? It might make sense for us to move away from stable coins. And again, lots of protocols have been thinking the same. And so that's why we've moved away from BUSD, which is a stable coin. Also, I should just quickly mention as a slight aside, because of the scrutiny of BUSD in particular, new BUSD is is being stopped to be created. BUSD will always be supported. So if you have BUSD, it's always going to be pegged to the price of a dollar. So you've got nothing to be concerned about. But new BUSD moving forward is not going to be minted. It's not going to be created. So that's another reason why BT, the founder of Elephant Money, thought, do you know what? kind of makes sense to move away from BUSD. And so that's why we're moving away from BUSD. So we got rid of BUSD, but of course we need to deposit something. And so we pivoted to depositing BNB, you know, the number four cryptocurrency. It's got about, it's worth about 46, you know, billion in liquidity. So, you know, a huge, successful, you know, behemoth of, of a cryptocurrency. So, one of the reasons that we could make the fixed 0.5% a day was because futures was linked to a stable coin, BUSD. But now it's not, is it? Now we have pivoted away and we're now linked essentially to BNB. So we're now linked to an asset that will rise and fall. Hence the fact that therefore the daily rates in futures will rise and fall. So essentially, the, the daily APR that we're now making in futures is linked to the price of BNB. &B. Really, my headline would be, I know I could have just said this straight away, but I wanted you to kind of understand the context, because I don't know about you, but I like to really understand things, because then it's just it's so much more fun, and then it's a lot more enjoyable understanding the process. So essentially, my headline would be, if BNB &B rises, we will be at 0.5% a day in futures, but if BNB B falls or it sort of moves sideways, we will dip below that 0.5% a day. Now, I do also understand, and I genuinely do, I'm not just saying this to give you lip service, that when there's a change such as this, some individuals are going to have resistance to it. Although there's a completely legitimate reason as to why, I do understand that some might be thinking, well, hang on, hang on. When Futures, you know, was launched, it was said it's fixed at 0.5% a day, and that's exciting. Now it's not. I get that. I understand that. But as I said at the, the start of this update, any industry f for growth has to change, has to pivot, has to evolve, has to move with the times. If, if things change, we didn't know when futures started that the SEC would be coming after stable coins. That wasn't known. You know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? You know, maybe with hindsight, maybe we would have started with B and B, and maybe we would have started with a variable rate that could, let's say, pivot between I don't know, 0.3 and 0.5 percent. Maybe that's you know, upon hindsight, where things would have been had we have known that the SEC would have in their crosshairs stable coins. But we didn't know that, and here's where we are. And what do we do? We kind of react and respond, and and we grow, and we we keep calm, and we remain stoic. Now, most of the comments I have seen have been very kind of uh, supportive and understanding, but I also don't want to sound like one of those people that's just like terminally optimistic. I would say I'm a realist for sure, but I also want to just kind of say to you, I do understand if when you got involved in futures, and you uh, you understood it's 0.5 percent a day, and that's exciting, and now it's not. Again, I do get that. I do get that. But hopefully, hopefully, if we kind of zoom out a little bit, you can see that for sustainability and for longevity, this is actually a very smart thing. I would say for every one or two comments, and I have seen a few comments that are a little bit negative and causing a bit of, of FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt, and saying, oh, this isn't how it was promised when it was started. And that's true. You know, if you're thinking that, you're absolutely justified to think that. That is a fair comment. You are correct. But again, if we zoom out for every one or two comments that I'm seeing, that are saying that I'm seeing 20 or 30 saying do you know what for sustainability for growth this does make sense and also 
let's just quickly say how much this is still a huge improvement on inflation eating banks you know even at 0.4 percent a day even at 0.3 percent a day that is still absolutely unheard of those are the sort of returns that people that are in institutions behind closed doors only ever get access to that's why decentralized finance is is leveling the playing field we can play with the big boys we can get those returns only in decentralized protocols and also let's think about the best bank account return did you know you might find this interesting the best interest rate literally the best interest rate you can get on a bank is five percent five percent that's a year that works out at 0.013% a day. 0.013. Let me say that again. 0.013 is the best return you can get on a bank account. And anybody that's in a bank account getting that is over the moon. They're overjoyed. 0.013. So to compare that to futures, even if our daily return falls to 0.4, maybe even 0.3, we are still head and shoulders light years above what we would get in traditional finance and also one other thing and then i will kind of move on it's only temporary bt the founder of elephant money has has said every single time the goal is always to still be at 0.5 percent a day that hasn't changed we just now have the option to dip below that because we're now pegged to an asset that goes up and down bnb if it was a stable coin this wouldn't be the case, but we now know why we're not pegged to a stable coin. You know, every action, as Isaac Newton once said, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. There's yin and yang to everything, isn't there? So we're no longer linked to a stable coin, so we can't therefore be stable at 0.5% a day. We are linked to BNB, which is a great asset, but like any cryptocurrency, it's volatile. So therefore, because we're linked, we're pegged to something that is volatile, the daily rate could be, will be I wouldn't say volatile, but it will go up and down as well. But the goal is, if BNB does well, we will still be at 0.5%. And so that is still the goal. So I just wanted to quickly share that with you. Also, I would, uh, another thing to quickly add, we are, as at the time of making you this video, we are days, literally days into this change. So there isn't even enough data yet to really make informed decisions about how this will play out over time. I suspect that possibly, possibly, we, there might be, let's say, maybe a maybe a flaw that's added that the price could only the daily APR could could only go down to, and then what will happen is we'll have this kind of this um, this filter, if you like, between let's say I don't know, let's imagine it was 0.3 percent, and therefore futures would always pay between 0.3 and 0.5 percent today. We may fluctuate between that. Th that would still be absolutely phenomenal, but we are days into this it's only just happened so let's wait and see how this plays out and uh, again the, the number one skill with any sort of investment i've said this before and i know that you know this is to be stoic we don't want to be emotional it's very easy to say that i know particularly when it's you know your money our money that we're talking about but we don't want to emotionally react we want to take a beat step back look at the big picture trust the process BT has been a VP of two multi-billion dollar companies. Let's trust that he knows what he's doing. Chess, not checkers, as he says. And again, we're still so early to the party. So I wanted to quickly share uh, both of those with you. The, the rate for futures, the 0.5, which is, you know, now essentially variable. And why we have moved from BUSD into BNB. Okay, how are we for time? I don't like to keep this video too long, but do you mind if I quickly crowbar in one more thing? I mentioned at the beginning this uh, elephant sale that we had. Uh, again, at the time of making this video, this was just a few days ago. So, moving aside from futures for a moment, um, there was a, a dip in the elephant price this week, as you, as you may have noticed. I wanted to quickly share with you why it happened and why it's good. What? A dip in the price is good? What are you talking about? Well, let me explain. The elephant token this week fell. I think at, at the, the the most uh, the biggest fall was 16, 16%. It's recovered a little bit since then, by the way. And here's essentially what happened. You may or may not know about this, but essentially the largest single holder of the elephant token, and I literally do mean that. I mean the number one, the number one. Let me say this again: the biggest holder of the elephant token, the biggest human holder, 
sold all of their elephant tokens. Nobody knew they were going to do it. And, you know, they don't have to say they're going to do it. This is, again, decentralized finance. But they sold and they actually made $2.4 million. So good on them. So congratulations. And I think they put about 100000 in. I think it was about two years ago or so. So, you know, a great return. It's the start of the year. And they thought, you know what, I'm going to take my, take my profits. And you do the same. We do the same. So, you know, that's great for them. And it was a big sell. Now, think about any company, whether you're in, you know, any company, Tesla or Coca-Cola, if literally the biggest shareholder in Tesla or Coca-Cola sold all of their shares, of course it would affect the price, wouldn't it? It's exactly what has happened here. But unlike traditional finance, as you may well know, Elephant Money has the treasury. And this is, if you like, the, the secret source, the beating heart. This is why long term we're all going to make it and we're all going to be okay because of the treasury. So let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. So what's happened is the biggest human holder sold all of their elephant tokens, uh, 8 trillion elephant tokens. Now, the reason that this is good news, well, many reasons, one of them is because as time goes on, this means there's going to be less and less human holders that can essentially affect the price. Imagine the price of elephant money, I don't know, 5x's this year, 10x's this year. And imagine if that same person, let's imagine it 10x's, and let's imagine that same person took out all their tokens, you know, when we 10x. That would be a, a 25 million payday for that person. Now, that would affect the protocol, you know, more. And so it's actually good and the, the, the holder is happy because they've obviously made a few million, so they're over the moon. But this is this is a huge relief. In fact, BT himself even said publicly, he said, this is a huge relief. He, he even said, could you imagine somebody holding these, these 8 trillion tokens over our heads when we get to a few billion market cap? And there's no sell shaming here. You know, nobody's pointing a finger saying, oh, I can't believe you did that. You know, we're all in this to do well financially and there's of course absolutely nothing wrong with that but the great news is now we have less of these big holders so essentially what i'm saying is this can't happen again this there's no human holder that can sell this many tokens in fact let me quickly share something with you uh, i want to quickly give a shout out to sk crypto k as well uh, uh, sk crypto k wonderful member of the elephant money community uh, great guy great communicator funny guy as well good human and uh, i saw sk crypto k uh, make a video recently uh, showing exactly what i'm about to show you right now in fact i reached out to him and said do you mind if i just share the same because i thought it was thought it was great if you don't follow sk crypto k by the way we'll put a link to his youtube channel in the description below but what we're looking at right now i know this looks a little bit geeky and a little bit nerdy and when i first looked at stuff like this a few years ago i was like what is this this might as well be written in latin but what we're looking at here is essentially the blockchain and we are being presented with here the biggest holders of elephant token so as you can see here it says rank one two three four and you may or may not know this but the four biggest holders are essentially what are known as protocol owned well the the, the let me rephrase this the the tokens that are held the elephant tokens that we're seeing here are owned by elephant money itself the number one here this is an area of elephant money called the graveyard. And look over here where it says percentage, 50%, 50% of the available elephant money tokens are locked up in what's known as the graveyard. The next area here at number two is almost 20%. This is the treasury that I talked about earlier. This is also known as Bertha. So look, combined, that 70% of all the elephant tokens are held by the protocol itself. And the protocol is not going to do what this human holder did, again, no cell shaming here, we would have done the same, but the protocol is not just going to dump because that's how it's coded. And look, at, let's look at the next two here. These two are the liquidity pools, whether you know this or not, when we buy elephant token, I'm not going to get too nuanced right now, but when we buy elephant token, we buy them from the liquidity liquidity pools. So if we add together these percentages, we got 50%, almost 20, 7 and a half and 5, we get to about 81% or so. My point is 81% of the elephant tokens that are available and there's there's a limited number as well, which is a, another great reason for excitement for the future. There's there's always going to be a finite supply, but over 80% are locked up 
in the protocol itself. And then we, when we move to position five, this is where us humans come in. And look at the, the biggest human holder now. They only own 0.25%. They own 2.5 trillion tokens, as you can see here. Now, as I mentioned, the biggest seller from a few days ago had eight I think I think it was almost nine, eight between eight and nine trillion tokens, but they're gone. And so their sale dinged the price. You know, it was a gut punch, as it would be for any company where the biggest sh shareholder sold. But we kind of like, you know, we, we, we kind of like hop, skipped and stumbled, if you like, for a little bit. Tell me any other protocol where you can take out 2.5 million and you, you you still keep going. There's still, I don't even know what the liquidity is right now. It's about 60 million in, in Bertha itself, in the treasury. So we are still absolutely fine, despite this, you know, this right hook from Tyson that kind of knocked us for like a few hours. We kind of got back again. As Rocky Balboa said, it's not how many times we're hit, is it? It's how many times we get back up. So this is a great thing, this sale, because many pluses. Firstly, the holder did very well, so well done them. Secondly, it's a testament to the strength of the protocol that we had this big... This is literally the biggest hit. It's the school bully hitting you really hard and you fall down and you get back up and you go, Whoa, now what? And they're like, oh, OK. And they had one hit. And so that's great as well. So again, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm just being like eternally optimistic just to be eternally optimistic. But when we zoom out and we look at what's going on behind the scenes and we look at the genius and the mechanics of what it is that we are involved in here, you know, hashtag wag me. We're all going to make it. So uh, let's begin to wrap up this uh, this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed what, we, what we've covered in, in this update. I know there's been a few changes and, you know, there will continue to be a few changes. The only constant in life is change, isn't it? So I'd love to know your thoughts on this and please be brutally transparent. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm not trying to, you know, um, fish for, for, you know, positive comments here. How did you feel about the change in futures? Let us know in the comments below. And uh, if you weren't happy with it, that's absolutely fine. We're very open to all your feedback. I'm not a big fan at all. Have you seen this? I'm sure you have. It happens a lot in Telegram online. Somebody will post something that may be perceived as, you know, FUD, they call it, fear, uncertainty and doubt. And often it's just a, a genuine, legitimate question that somebody has. There's absolutely no problem. If you're concerned about something and you want to voice your concern, that's fine. In my opinion, that's not FUD. You're not causing FUD. You have a genuine concern. And I understand that. Changes in futures where it said it was a fixed 0.5% a day rate and now it's not of course we're human there's nothing wrong with saying okay i am a little bit concerned about that because that is not what i was originally told that's totally justifiable and if you feel that way post it in the comments below because i'd love to hear your thoughts but hopefully now that we've kind of zoomed out a little bit and kind of looked at it from a macro thirty-seven thousand foot level you'll understand why that is the case and let's remind ourselves it's because we were, of course, pegged to a stable coin. And now that we're not pegged to a stable coin, we're essentially pegged to an asset that rises and falls. So therefore, when we were pegged to a stable coin, we could be stable, as the term suggests. Now we're not pegged to a stable coin. The, the daily APR can rise and can fall. The goal is, of course, to always be at 0.5%. And the mechanics behind the scenes, under the hood of the engine, are aiming to be at 0.5% a day for as much as we possibly can, but it will dip now and again due to the price of BNB. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We do read your comments. Uh, you know, we don't edit them uh, and uh, we'd love to hear what you think. And uh, I appreciate you watching this video. I know this was a fraction longer than planned and uh, I will let you run. My name is Chris Farrell from Fly in DeFi. By the way, if you enjoyed this, uh, this video, please hit the like button on the way out and uh, let us know again in the comments what you thought. Hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and uh, talk to you soon. All the best. Bye.